Tonight we're in Donnybrook in Dublin for the club international clash between Ireland and Scotland. Neither side have won in these encounters when they've played away from home and Ireland looked as though they were going to keep that record up early on. Driving up onto the Scottish line, only four minutes gone and putting the Scots under real pressure. Number eight, Frank Cogan driving on, held up by Damien Kelly and Finlay Gillis, but still stretching over the line. Four minutes gone, Ireland 5-0 ahead. Dara Hoshe missed the kick, but that was a great start for the home side. And it got even better ten minutes later. Line out five metres out from the Scottish line, well taken there by Fergal Walsh. And again, the drive on Mike Essex. The hooker at the heart of that there, and they've left him with the ball, driving up towards the Scottish line. The Scots pretty well organised there, but Rory Mackay trying to get a hold of somebody, but he'll no do it standing up there, and Essex still the man with the ball. The Irish over the Scots line, and the hooker touching down for try number two. From the Irish pack. With Barry Keeson, that, uh, this time O'Shea, this no mistake from wide out, a much more difficult kick, but putting that one over and putting Ireland 12 points to nil ahead. It had been a pretty slow start for the Scots, but after about 20 minutes they got into gear and the ball moved out wide there to Fraser Harkness, the Selkirk fullback pulled down by what looked like a high tackle, referee Luke Pearce saying coming in from the side anyway. And a chance for Scott White to get Scotland on the board. Straight through the posts by the Melrose standoff. 12 points to three after 16 minutes. Scotland now starting to get into the game. A lot more Richard Sneddon. Out there to Malcolm Clapperton. Clapperton to John Diel coming in on the angle. Held up five metres from the Irish line. Quick ball again for the Scots. Could they make something out of this one? Again, Fraser Harkness. Pulled down just short, and the Irish scrambling that one away. And six minutes to go to half time. Scrum inside the Scottish half. Penalty against the Scottish front row, said referee Pierce. And up step, Dara Fitzpatrick, and no problem for the Black Rock man to put the Irish into a 15 points to three lead with five minutes to go to the break. Oh, snaffle there at the line out by Rory Mackay to his second row cohort, Damien Kelly. Look at Kelly go. There's a sight on the hoop inside to Finlay Gillis. Gillis knocked over by Killen Lett, but making the ball available. The Scots arriving in numbers. Irish defence in a wee bit of disarray. Diel out to White. James King cutting back in the angle. Pulled down there with quick ball. This time, prop Gordy Reid. And again, it's the Scottish backs looking dangerous. Harkness, the man, bustling through there. And oh, did he get that touchdown? Mm. Well, he'll claim it anyway. It's so hard to stop from that distance. The Burley Selkirk full back. And oh, that one might just have slipped from his grasp. But the referee in touch judging consultation. Try to Scotland. Well, that certainly got their tails up. And they had a couple of minutes left before half time. And this time Malcolm Clapperton cutting back inside. Mark Cairns on his elbow. Clapperton still in support, cutting through the gap in the Irish defence and in behind the posts. Well, 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 what a comeback by the Scots before the half-time whistle. Scott White, no problem with that conversion. And having been 15 points to three down, the Scots go in at the break, level at 15 points all. Scrum Magazine. Subscribe online at scrummagazine.com. Into the second half, and both sides knew they'd have to pull out something special if they were going to win this game. And the Scots tried something really special with this cross kick by White, picking out James Fleming. Oh, sneaking away there from Matt Healy on his way to the line, cut inside. Great offload to Damien Kelly, and oh, just couldn't get enough of a hand on that one. Play in the second half. Irish back down the field 
It is seesawing stuff all the way through the second half. And the Scots now having to defend desperately. And Cogan again, holding it up for the cavalry to arrive. Cronin beavering away in there, but knocked back again by the Scots. The Irish inches from the line. Damien Kelly, Gordy Reid, Rory Mackay all in there trying to repulse the attackers. But what was that? We knock on there by Simon Crawford. The referee didn't spot it. And now only a fraction away from the Scots line. O'Shea into play scrum half. Looking for support on either side. Finds Hugh Hogan, but oh, that was a knock on. And Frank Hogan's dive over the line. Well, that was more out of hope than anything else. Ten minutes to go, and the Irish still back in the attack. Matt Healy taken out by James Fleming. Fraser Hartness in trying to seal the ball off, but coming back on the Irish side. Hogan up there to Simon Crawford. And a real guddle of a ball, finding Robin Copeland. Copeland knocked over by James King. The Irish sensing the chance here, though. O'Shea, long ball out to Healy. But the referee had spotted a midfield offence. The Irish put it into the corner. And they were all ready to rumble. They'd done it in the first half. They'd done it twice in the first half. But this time they won the penalty. And no arguing. They were going to take the points. Up stepped Darrow Fitzpatrick yet again. Straight through the post. 18 points to 15. With nine minutes to go. But the game was still wide open. And the Scots driving deep into Irish territory. Ball laid back there for Richard Sneddon. Well... White attempts to drop goal, but he knew the penalty was coming, even if he didn't get it. Lined up the penalty. Not the easiest kick in the world with that sort of pressure, but the Belrose standoff leveled the scores with seven minutes left on the clock. Both sides knew that the next score would be crucial. And the Scots running from inside their own 22. Damien Kelly taking the ball up there. Andy Dunlop in support. The Scots desperate to keep possession and get some territory. Finally, the ball swung out wide. Ball from White into midfield. Long ball out there to Fraser Thompson, the Melrose winger. Almost taken out, but inside ball to Fraser Hartness. Hartness up to the 22. Chips ahead, and whoop, was had a wee nudge there. Kicked on by James King. Followed up by Cammy Ferguson, but no. That ball had gone dead, but was there a wee nudge on Fraser Harkness as he chipped ahead there? Well, the man coming in was Cattle Sheridan, and he certainly seemed to impede him, but there was nothing in it for the Scots, said referee Luke Pierce. And going into the final minute, the Irish had already missed a winning penalty by Fitzpatrick. Drop goal attempt. And now trying to line him up for a drop goal onto the Scots 22, moving the ball infield. Simon Crawford there, helped by Robin Copeland. Fitzpatrick going to drop back into the pocket for this one, you can be sure. And Sheridan puts the ball out to the Black Rock man. Would he make it? Yes, straight between the posts. It might have been St. Patrick's Day on Wednesday, but it was Fitzpatrick's night on Friday. And probably didn't start as well as we wanted to. We wanted to really come out in the first 20, but it was uh, Ireland that did that. And then second 20 of the first half, we come back into it, but we just probably gave them too much of a head start. But as you said, an entertaining game, but very disappointed. The boys really, really dug deep. Um, we were confident at halftime, but we knew we had to start again. And that second half was um, the boys putting a great shift and they'll be a bit tired, a few tired boys in that change room tonight. But full credit to Ireland, though, they played well. It's always an, uh, enjoyable coming over here and we've played them four or five years now and I hope it continues for the next four or five years. It's a great incentive, giving the club boys a chance to play a bit of rugby internationally. So a great game here at Donnybrook. Ireland edging it with a final kick of the game. Tremendous advert for club rugby in both Ireland and Scotland. Ireland 21, Scotland 18. This is Ron Evans for Scottish Rugby Television.